Welcome to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. Today, we're going to look at the total synthesis of ent plagiocyanin B. The work we are going to look at in this video was published by the Wood Group in Organic Letters. Plagiocyanin B was first isolated in 2018 from the Chinese liverwort plant, Plagiochila duthiana. It is the first example of a sesquiterpene alkaloid isolated from a liverwort, and it contains a unique 673 pyridine containing framework, and is believed to be synthesized from aromadendrane. Molecules isolated from this liverwort have previously been shown to possess cytotoxic antifungal and neurotrophic activities. However, preliminary investigations have not revealed any antifungal or anti-cancer activity for either plagiochinin A or plagiochinin B. So let's start by looking at the retrosynthesis. The first disconnection happens at the 1,2 dihydroxyl moiety, which could be generated from the oxidation of an alkene. This exoalkene could be generated in two steps from an oxidation of an endoalkene, followed by a Wittig reaction. This pyridine-containing intermediate will be derived from an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde in an aminocyclization reaction. The aldehyde could be generated using carbonylation, and the precursor to this carbonylation could be produced using a Mukayama-aldol reaction. So let's dive in to the forward synthesis. The first reaction was an ozonolysis using ozone, dimethyl sulfide, and tosylic acid. This reaction can be quite exothermic, and the authors included a warning that their reaction became hot and effervescent, and that they had to take precautions to cool it down and reduce the reactivity to prevent it from running away. The reaction begins with a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition between the alkene and the ozone molecule. This generates a malozonide intermediate, which rearranges to form the Kriege intermediate, which then recyclizes to form an ozonide. Reductive quenching with DMS generates two carbonyls, an aldehyde and a ketone. Treatment of this aldehyde with methanol generates the dimethyl acetal. With the aldehyde protected as an acetal, the authors could prepare the silalenol ether. The alpha proton of the ketone was deprotonated using LDA and the enolate was trapped using TMS chloride. This TMS enolate was then used in the Mukayama aldol reaction. Reacting the compound with tin tetrachloride served two functions. It deprotected the dimethyl acetal to generate the aldehyde and also catalyzes the aldol addition. The TMS group is attacked by the chloride, which generates the enolate, which then underwent intramolecular addition to the newly revealed aldehyde to produce a beta hydroxy ketone. Reaction with acetic acid caused an elimination reaction to generate the target alpha beta unsaturated enone. To carry out the carbonylation reaction, a triflate group was required. To this end, LDA was used to deprotonate the alpha proton and the enolate was then trapped using bis trifluoromethansulfonyl aniline, which installs a triflate group on the anionic oxygen. To carry out the carbonylation reaction, the authors used a palladium catalyst. This undergoes oxidative insertion into the carbon-oxygen bond. Carbon monoxide then binds to the palladium centre, and triethylsilane promotes a migratory insertion, which rearranges so the carbon monoxide is now bound to the carbon, and the palladium now bears a hydride ligand. Reductive elimination inserts this hydride to the carbonyl group to form the aldehyde and regenerate the active catalyst. With the aldehyde now installed, the authors proceeded to the pyridine synthesis. 
This was accomplished using an azotriene cyclization. First, a propargyl amine is condensed with the aldehyde to form an imine. Treatment with DBU promotes a reversible isomerization between an alkyne and an allene species. It is this allene species which undergoes a 6 pi electrocyclization reaction to form a new sigma bond with the migration of two pi bonds. This unstable intermediate then undergoes a 1,3 hydride shift to generate the pyridine ring. DBU then deprotonates the hydrogen adjacent to the benzyl group, which eliminates to form an alkene. In the next stage of the synthesis, the newly formed alkene was selectively oxidized to an aldehyde. This reaction was discovered by serendipity in attempts to use the Wacker oxidation to oxidize the alkene to a methyl ketone. We can therefore hypothesize that the reaction proceeds through a similar process to the Wacker oxidation. First, the palladium-2 species forms a pi complex with the pyridine ring and the alkene. Addition of water hydroxylates the compound and beta hydride elimination forms an enol which tautomerizes to an aldehyde. This compound then decomposes in an undefined oxidation process which cleaves the carbon-carbon bond and produces an aldehyde on the cleaved carbon. This anti-Markovnikov selectivity has been observed once before by Spencer and Gaunt who worked on the oxidation of styrene type compounds and observed this reaction under similar conditions. The reaction is notable as the oxidation stops at the aldehyde and does not over oxidize to the carboxylic acid. Also, it is selective for the exoalkene and does not react with the internal alkene present in the heptane ring. To selectively oxidize this aldehyde to the carboxylic acid, a pinic oxidation was employed. In this reaction, chlorous acid is first generated by the reaction of sodium chloride and sodium orthophosphate. This first protonates the aldehyde and allows the chloride to act as a nucleophile to attack the carbonyl center. A pericyclic fragmentation then occurs and a proton is abstracted from the substrate and hypochlorous acid is generated as a byproduct. Amylene is added to the reaction to act as a scavenger for this hypochlorous acid, which reacts in a halohydrin reaction to neutralize it. The carboxylic acid was then converted to a methyl ester. TMS diazomethane was used, as this is a more convenient alternative to diazomethane. This is protonated by the acid, which then acts as a nucleophile and eliminates nitrogen gas. The TMS group is cleaved upon workup to reveal the methyl ester. With the pyridine moiety now complete, the final stages of the synthesis involved installing the correct functionality on the heptane ring. The internal alkene was now oxidized using an iron catalyzed Wacker oxidation. This produced a ketone in a 46% yield, together with an alcohol in a 25% yield. The alcohol byproduct was oxidized to a ketone using a swern oxidation to be carried forward. Iron 2 chloride is first oxidized using polymethyl hydrosilane and oxygen gas. This generates an iron 3 hydride species. This adds to the double bond, and the iron is then oxidized with the oxygen which was sparged through the solution to accelerate the reaction. This generates a radical which binds an iron 3 peroxy species, which is then reduced again with polymethyl hydrosilane. This produces the target ketone and regenerates the iron 2 catalyst. A Wittig reaction then followed to install a methylene group. The Wittig reagent is first generated by the deprotonation of methyl triphenylphosphonium bromide by sodium tert amylate. This undergoes a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with the ketone and then a retro 2 plus 2 cycloreversion which decomposes the oxophosphatane to generate the alkene. An upjohn dihydroxylation then completed the synthesis. Osmium tetroxide undergoes a cycloaddition with the alkene, which is then hydrolyzed to leave two hydroxyl groups in its place. This reaction was unselective and formed a mix of products in a 1 to 3 diastereomeric ratio, favoring the undesired ent plagiochinin B. That completes this synthesis. In total, 23 mgs of ent plagiochinin B and 8 mgs 
of plagiochinin B were synthesized. This was completed in 12 steps from carine, and nausey NMR studies confirmed that the stereochemistry of the original reported structure is correct. Highlights of this synthesis include the electrocyclization used to synthesize the pyridine ring and the oxidation chemistry. Most notably, the differentiation between internal and external alkenes using palladium and iron catalyzed Vacker type oxidations. That's everything in this week's Simplifying Synthesis. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments down below. The next synthesis I'll be looking at will be cotylenin A.